Hello everyone, today in this video we will fight against the Atma Selector of our world around us and this time we will discuss one very important issue of uh, present times I mean, I would like to uh, show you that currently we are the uh, victims of victims uh, and we see around us that the victimhood mentality is unfortunately quite well developed Everyone wants to be a victim in sense, everyone wants to belong to some uh, minority that allegedly was persecuted in the past or is persecuted now and that's why they deserve some privilege. Privilege in uh, some subsidies, privilege in the priority in employment and so on and so on. Of course, all this victimhood is connected with the desirable, privileges, materialistic ones. Somehow it works like this always. I mean, now we have minorities like ethnic minorities, uh, racial minorities. Actually, the term race is not used properly. It should be a type, because race is the lower taxonomical unit, but okay. Uh, we have also now sexual minorities, surprisingly about several hundreds, and the number is still growing, so we see that it's still ideological bias behind it, nothing else and we have also some other uh, different minorities realistic or not doesn't matter uh, but people feel minorities so they want to be uh, because of this privilege because allegedly they are persecuted or like in case of uh, some people uh, who are uh, for instance of uh, different color like especially blacks allegedly they were persecuted in the past but surprisingly many of them who live now especially in Europe and some of them even in North America don't come from the ones who are directly who are descendants of former uh, slaves and the ones who are descendants of former slaves actually have nothing to common already uh, with this uh, slavery because it was long ago and the owners and former slaves are dead for long. So we see that now we have, as I said, price and cult of victimhood by any means. And what are the sources of this, let's say, situation? I mean, uh, one needs to go a little bit back, several decades back. And we see that in at the end of 1960s, especially in Western world, Western European, countries, Northern American countries with exception of Canada to lesser extent, started introducing welfare state because it was easier for the uh, government elites to rule when the people were pampered and there was a time of economical development so still there were some uh, money to be spent, money to be shared. Of course politicians are never spending, never sharing their own money, that's why it comes so easily to them. And if he, one introduces welfare state, well, very quickly the uh, situation uh, arises that the salaries for the lo lo lower paid professions are equal or smaller than subsidies and uh, other welfare uh, supports th that one can get from the state. So very often people conclude, ah, so it's not worth working, not worth making an effort. If I can get similar or even higher mm, wages without working, but I have to specialize myself in, in uh, swindling this money from the welfare system. And many people started doing that. So very often and very quickly shortages for labor force doing the, ba the most basic jobs uh, 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 occurred so government started uh, taking people from different sides of the world from actually all sides of the world as uh, workers uh, for the mainly the basic works uh, to uh, just end up the problem of the shortages of this labor force in these professions and the funny thing is that Later these people were allowed to take their families and so on and their number was quickly growing and now we see how it really uh, reflects the 
uh, ethnic and demographic structure of Western societies. But if, when these people appeared and started to be numerous, they also slowly started playing more, more and more important role in politics. And we know politicians, they will always use any opportunity to uh, gain more power and to secure their power for another term. No one thinks long term in democracies because everyone thinks only for another term. Also sharks of the business that support uh, democratic politicians uh, think the same way because sharks of the business are mainly the managers of the big corporations about the disconnections of the owners and managers of big corporations I was talking many times it happened more or less at the same time uh, in the 50s, 60s and uh, we see uh, that the problem is growing and minorities came into play, play new minorities and came into politics to serve political interest of this political side or the other depending who, uh, who needed them to gain more points in the elections, for instance, or more support, and so on and so on. So, uh, we see that this is first uh, reason uh, that why we have this development of victimhood. But the second, more important reason is the fact that in the mid of 1970s, Germany started uh, paying re repatriations to so-called uh, Holocaust victims. So people who were mainly of Jewish origin and survive uh, prosecutions during national socialistic regime, during German occupations of some European countries. Fair enough. Okay. For Germany, it was the West G uh, Germany. It was not a problem. Very uh, nicely rebuilt economy, uh, very dynamically developing. They even didn't feel it. But at the end of 1980s and in the beginning of 1990s, they stopped paying these repatriations. Because they paid what they were supposed to pay. But uh, w now we need to uh, come back to the beginning. When there is a free lunch, so easy money, always people who are really sly and cynical will always appear to get some of this money for them. And these sly and cynical people establish something like this, what one uh, can call, uh, quoting Mr. Norman Finkelstein, uh, American uh, historian and sociologist, who wrote the book Holocaust Industry. And in this book he argued and uh, convinced uh, many people that this Holocaust Industry, th these are actually groups of people that are gaining huge profits from this uh, money that are paid to uh, people who are real victims of these uh, atrocities of the war and they have nothing in common with people who are who are really victims of these prosecutions and this mass murder but they are simply these sly and cynical people who cash in on that and uh, he was giving example, for instance, his now deceased mother, that uh, she was one of the people who survived uh, at war atrocities, Holocaust and so on, but uh, she didn't get actually any, uh, any payment for that, any, rep any repatriations. So uh, one should say that uh, th this is quite common. And these people who are using uh, the mm, story of the Second World War atrocities to cash money on that, some of them are Jewish, some of them are even not, and uh, no, none of them have something in common with people who were really prosecuted. And now we see that always when easy money comes into play, there are people who want to abuse it. It works always like this. And the problem is that after Germany, when they stopped uh, paying, of course these people were used to very comfortable life for doing nothing. So they figure out that they can press Switzerland to pay back some money that were deposited before the Second World War by some people, citizens of European countries I need to mention, of Jewish origin or allegedly Jewish origin, and later no one after Second World War came back for this money because they were dead. 
and of course after a few years of battle in many courts uh, Swiss banks uh, formed fund which paid uh, some hundreds millions of dollars to this organization and that's it now this organization because for the luxurious and extravagant life one needs a lot of money and money runs out quickly so this organization presses uh, countries like Poland and other uh, now uh, Central and Eastern European countries uh, there was even Terezin declaration and now they uh, figure out that the, there should be something like uh, like properties without hair and uh, because they are Jewish so they allegedly they owe rights they own rights to these uh, allegedly previously Jewish possessions that were uh, taken by the state when the owners were dead okay so we see that according to the law uh, regulations it doesn't fit but okay they don't care about the reality they care about cash so they are pushing to get more and more and more and more some countries resist better some countries resist worse and of course some of this money that this organization managed to squeeze from some countries go to uh, state of Israel but only minor part because state of Israel of course cannot as I mentioned in previous video uh, be sustainable on its own so uh, they also want to find another source of money just to survive and recently they got uh, they got also problems because they got isolated in the international uh, politics especially among their neighbors so they are really in the desperate need uh, of, of money but now we need to take into account that we localize people who benefit from this procedure but this procedure opened a Pandora box. Why? Because after this Jewish and allegedly Jewish organization, Armenians also started pressing, and Armenians are very influential in France and in the United States, despite the fact they are not so numerous, and they are slowly pressing different governments to recognize Armenian genocides from 1915 to 1917 to just uh, strip Turkey from some money. Like because modern Turkey is the uh, successor of the Ottoman state, so they want to uh, just squeeze some money from Turkey. Okay, we know that maybe Turkey is not a very prosperous Germany, but Armenians are not so numerous, so if they succeed, they could gain something. So they also uh, develop all the stories about Armenian genocide, Armenian Holocaust, and so on, and uh, they also lobbying for pressuring Turkey and for recognition of the Armenian genocide. But now, <coughs> especially uh, in connection with welfare state, uh, late 1960s and mid 70s, the development of Holocaust industry, we see that these two factors uh, managed to convince people, many people, that it's good to be a victim. And after it, quickly we see that we have uh, other minority rights activists, uh, end of 70s, beginning of 80s, uh, popping up like mushrooms after the rain, and as, as we say in some uh, sayings in some language, and uh, we see that after ethnic minorities we have so-called sexual minorities real or not it doesn't matter and more and more people want to be a victim and nowadays the situation is like this very often in the corporations that if you want to have a job of your colleague position of your colleague it's enough that this colleague says something few words too much or you, you just denounce you just uh, uh, you just uh, inform uh, HR that your colleague allegedly said this and this and that of course he or she will be fired for great offense breaking for uh, r rules of political correctness that changes from one day to another but one who gets this job in this way should be aware that sooner or later uh, he can be removed from his post in the same way exactly because no one can be woke enough no one can be leftist enough and ideology always changes adapts to the reality to serve the ones who have power at the moment 
this is always how ideology works. So now we see that in this sense we are all, because our civilization is uh, actually uh, slowly collapsing because of this, and now one can say that now we are all victims of Holocaust and welfare state. Actually the ways how the Holocaust and welfare state is now being used and misused. So as a summary one can say that we are the victims of, we all are currently victims of Holocaust and welfare state. So I think that now I uh, explain some uh, issues of modern world to you and it's uh, and now we know why many people currently do not want to work, everyone wants to be a victim and people are actually more lazy, no one wants to take effort and everything is more and more lame and more and more uh, lousy because we showed to people that it's more profitable to be a victim not to be the one who really works and overcomes his or her weaknesses it's it's good to be weak that's why everything collapses because number of these people is growing exponentially because it brings profits Oh, if we don't change our future is really dark so uh, just to sum up as of now we are all victims of holocaust and welfare state all the best have a nice day bye